And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at Potion Making University Course, which is a small card expansion for the Potion Making Practice game made by Wright Games uh, within the last year or two here, a game that I've already reviewed. So if you're interested in that, you should check out that video. This video is going to cover mostly the expansion and some basic gameplay details, what the expansion changes, and how that can affect the game overall at the end. But real quick, we'll see what you get inside this expansion. We'll cover a little bit of gameplay, and then I'll come back here and give you my final opinions on University Course. So here you can see the components added by Potion Making University Course. Now, all it's adding is an extra deck of cards. If you've seen the base game, you'll know that this is a game about making potions out of components. And it comes with a stack of cards, which you'll be drawing from, which will be both your components and the things you're trying to make. So let's look at some of these because they're very similar to the base game cards in some aspects. So for example, this is a card here. It's called the Elixir of Contradiction. Uh, it requires one spring water and one uh, firelight in order to be made. And if it's played to the table, it actually counts as what's called an elementary uh, granium here. That is the component it is, this is the component you need to make it, and this is the potion it makes if you use it as a recipe or a formula. So. Uh, some of these are going to be played to the table at the beginning, uh, and these are going to be different types of components that are available. And you're going to play some from this deck and some from the other deck in the other game. Uh, but basically you'll have these different components, and if there's multiples they get stacked. So you're going to have these out on the table, and your objective is to try and earn points by making formulas that you have in your hand. So maybe I have a hand of these formulas here. Uh, and I'm trying to find the right elements out on the table in order to make one of my formulas. Now most of these are spells, but you'll see this one here would require some mushrooms, uh, a quintessence of will, and some power of astral. Well, none of that's out there. Uh, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to be playing cards from your hand to add elements out here. And if you were to play out one element that's not already there, for example, the waves of ether, I would be able to score a point for playing something that's unique to this table. What you're trying to do, as I said, is to make things from your hand. So let's look, for example, uh, at one of these. We have the, uh, the Lesser Talisman of Universality. Uh, if at some point we had the Mandrake Root, the Belladonna, and the Fern Flower out here on the table, I could take them all from there in order to place this out in front of me, and all of the appropriate elements, let's say these are them, would go out underneath this card, and I would score the four points for the Lesser Talisman of universality. In addition, this talisman says I receive half points for each of the formulas that someone else takes from me in order to make one of their own formulas. And that's when things become interesting. is because once you've made something, anyone else can use that in order to make something else. And you'll see here that this creature card says that it takes an elixir of contradiction and an elixir of rebirth in order to make. So if someone else has made this elixir of rebirth and has it out in front of them, and I have the elixir or the, the scientific gnawler in my hand, I can steal their potion in order to make it for me. However, I get full points, but they're going to get half points. If I had stolen both of the things from them and they had the lesser talisman of universality, they would be able to get all of the points. So not only would I score eight, but they'd score eight as well, and it's not nearly as beneficial for me. But that's the base idea of the game, is you're going to either play cards to the table here in order to make them into elements, and if you play something that's unique, score points, or you're gonna be playing cards from your hand using the elements from the middle to try and score points uh, by matching up the needed elements with uh, the ones that are in the center of the table. Now, that's essentially the base game. But what this game does is it adds some different rules. Uh, I have a video of the base game, so if you want to check out more information on that, you can go check it. But what this does is you're going to have two separate decks of cards, this deck and the deck from the previous game. And when you draw cards, you'll be able to draw from either. Now. You're going to draw up at the beginning of your turn to seven cards, if you have less than six. So if you have five or less cards, you're going to draw up to seven. If you have six, you draw nothing. At that point, you're going to, on your first action of the turn, be able to play either a card to the center of the table or to make a formula, or you can draw a card so long as you have less than eight cards. Your second action is going to have to be to play a card. You can either play one to the center of the table, as I showed you, to make an element, or to play a formula using everybody else's stuff and the stuff in the center of the table, scoring points appropriately. So it makes a few rule changes there in that you didn't always uh, draw up, you didn't always have the option of uh, the card that gives you full points for everything, but it also adds some new cards. 
So we have new talismans which give you powers. So this one here is the lesser talisman of growth, which is the, if at the beginning of your turn another player has more points than you, you get a point. So there's some ways to get points without playing cards. Uh, we have a new element, which is this one that I showed you earlier, the elementary granium, which can be used as any element out on the board, which is kind of nice, but if somebody ever steals your recipe and you've used one of these to make your recipe, you don't get any points for having it stolen. It also doesn't give you points when you play it out to the table because it's essentially a wild. Uh, you have new, just generally new formulas, and you have new spells. Now, spells are cards that you can play uh, out to the table, not in order to get the points for the element that you're playing them for, but in order to get the effect of the cards. This one says, play any formula from your hand or from the desk of elements, which is the area you play your cards to, uh, in order to do something. So it says this formula is considered complete uh, and you don't get any points. So this is a way to get something that you need maybe uh, from this center area or from your hand out onto the table, possibly so that you can use it to make another formula that you already have. So that's an interesting spell. Or we have the Forbidden Forest spell. What this does is that if people have creatures out on the table, uh, you can kill up to two creatures, well, you have to kill exactly two creatures, in order to get ten points. And whoever you kill these creatures from gets two points per creature that's killed. This works really well if you kill two of your own creatures, you've already scored the points for them, uh, but you kill two of your own creatures getting 14 points. Uh, there's a lot of spells like this. So there's transfiguration spells, which are going to change one thing into another. Uh, there's the haste spell, which lets you take two actions in a row. Uh, and then there's one more thing I want to cover. So there's a lot of these different talismans that give you different abilities. Uh, but there's one more thing I want to cover, which is going to be the life powder. Uh, now it's hard to find because there's only a couple of them in the deck. Uh, this is another one that's worth covering, but uh, we'll cover that one first. This one here is the elixir of Omnitude. This can be used as any other elixir in the game. So once you make this, it's a wild essentially. Uh, it's also one of the wild elements you'll see. But if you make this, it's a wild, but if you use it again and someone steals your formula from you, you get nothing in return. Uh, there is also the Life Powder. This counts as a wild powder. Some of the creatures will need things called powders in order to make them. This is a wild powder that you can use to make any creature. So the game is essentially changed in terms of the fact that you can draw from two different decks. They've included a lot more spells. Uh, they have included those talismans, which change things up a little bit. And they've somewhat tweaked the rules in order to give you uh, options on how to get more cards in your hand to speed it up a little bit in terms of having two decks, because the game will only end when you've gone through both of the decks entirely and played all of the cards from everyone's hands. At the end of the game, whoever has the most points by best uh, utilizing the elements in the middle of the table, finding out which elements they should play to the middle of the table for points, uh, and best combining other people's things with those talismans, uh, and scoring points is going to be the winner. And there you have it, that is Potion Making University Course. Uh, a nice little expansion for a game that I enjoyed the first time through. Uh, not my favorite card game, but one that I think has some interesting elements to it. The fact that you can take completed things from other players and put them together to make your own stuff at a, at a little bit of a loss to you because you're giving them points is an interesting aspect to me. And the fact that you're rewarded for putting elements out on the table that give people things that they need to access but also give you points for placing them out there is also another little interesting thing. Uh, this expansion adds uh, a couple of things, some good and some bad. One, it adds that extra deck of cards. Of course, more cards is usually a good thing, uh, and it adds some variety in terms of the talismans that have effects every turn, uh, some of the spells that are interesting and new and change the game dynamics in some way, uh, but it also adds a deck of cards, uh, which, you know, is the flip side to being good itself. Uh, adding that deck of cards expands the length of the game because you play until both decks of cards are gone in this game. So even though you're cycling through the cards faster, there's almost twice as many cards, which makes the game last longer. Now, this in some cases would be okay, but it really felt to me like the game outstayed its welcome. It was maybe a half an hour longer than I wanted it to be while I'm playing it. Uh, and after that time, you kind of get bored and you want to be done. So... Uh, I think if there was some way to mediate uh, or to, to mitigate the expansion of the game, making it longer, uh, this would be a great expansion. But for those people that enjoy potion making practice, wish that it was a longer game with uh, a, a longer playtime and more time to earn more points, they should check this game out. Or if they're simply looking for an addition to change the rules and would like to find a way to shorten the games themselves, I'd definitely check out Potion Making University Course. It's a good expansion, it just outstays its welcome a little bit. Thanks for watching our review today. 
For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. <laughs>